Welcome to lesson six, where we're going to continue exploring the relationships between fractions, decimals and percentages. Make sure you, you've got your practice activity from the previous session and some pen and paper for our work today. See you in a moment. In the last lesson, Miss Chambers left you with this activity. Shall we have a look at how you got on? So the first question was who has completed the greatest percentage of their walk? Who did you say? Shall we have a look? So we've got Amisha, Ben, Coco and Demi. Hmm. So the greatest percentage of their walk means that they've walked the furthest. Who did you say had walked the furthest? Yes, that's right. It's Demi, isn't it? Because we can see here she's definitely over halfway and she's taken quite a circuitous route, hasn't she? There's quite a few bends and turns in her journey and 50% would be around here, wouldn't it? So she's definitely further than everybody else. He's about 50% away, isn't he? Maybe Anisha's a similar amount and Coco too. So yes, it was definitely Demi. Let's look at the second question. Who has walked the shortest distance so far? Who did you say had walked the shortest distance so far? Did you say it was Coco? That's right. Because although Coco's probably walked about 50% of her journey, which is similar to some of the other children, She's got a much shorter journey, hasn't she? So the distance from Coco's home to school is shorter. So she's she's walked less, hasn't she? She's done the shortest distance. Let's look at the third question. Who is less than 50% off the way through their walk to school? Who did you say that was? Who is less than 50% through their walk to school? Did you say it was? Ben. Yes, it's Ben, isn't it? If we look here, Ben's probably done about 40% of his walk, hasn't he? This would probably be about 50% because, again, he has to go up and round this corner here, doesn't he? Excellent. Really well done if you got all those correct. You were also challenged to find some real life examples at home, weren't you? And I did the same. And I was looking around and, you know, the most of the real life examples I could find was when I was looking online and actually when I was playing games on my phone. So I was playing this word game on my phone. And I took a screenshot of it because it said that I could get 10 percent more coins if I spent this amount. I didn't end up buying any more coins. I like to try and win the coins fair and square. And then I was looking online and I was thinking, oh, I wonder if anyone's got any sales on. And I noticed that I could go to very.co.uk and they had 50% off on toys and that there was up to 99% off on toys in Amazon. I mean, that's almost 100% off, isn't it? Which would be almost a full price, which was absolutely fabulous. And actually, we could see there was almost 75% off as well on some of them, which is also over half off on that amount. So did you find any examples? Perhaps you found some on your phone too. Do you remember these pictures from the last lesson with Miss Chambers? What did you learn that percent means? I'd like you to quickly pause me and have a think about what the meaning of percent is. What did you say? Did you say that it meant four or out of every hundred? Fantastic. Let's say that together. The meaning of percent is four or out of every hundred. Now, in the last lesson, you were thinking about what these percentage amounts meant in relation to the full amount. How would we express the full amount as a percentage? What is the full amount as a percentage? Are you shouting it now? It would be 100%. Yes, that's right. So 100% can represent the full amount of a price or a journey or a battery life. So let's have a look at these pictures. We can see that the first picture showed 50% off the full price. What did this mean? Yes, that's right, it meant we had half of the full price. What about the fundraising target? target? They've raised 90%. Have they raised the full amount? What proportion of the full amount have they raised? They've raised most of it, haven't they? So they've raised 90% and they'd need another 10% to, read the, to reach the full amount of 100%. Excellent. I'd like you to have a look at this, look, this number line now. And you can see it shows the percentages from zero to 100%. But it also shows something else. I'd like you to pause me now and tell me what you notice about the relationship between those two sets of representations. What did you notice? So firstly, we can notice that 
we have the percentages from zero to 100% written as percentages, and we know that they mean for or out of every 100. Did you notice anything else? Yes, that's right. So they've been written as fractions, haven't they? And the fractions are all expressed as hundredths. Fantastic. Why do you think the fractions are expressed as hundredths? Why do you think they have a denominator of 100? Pause me now and have a think about the relationship between those. What did you think? What's your explanation for why we can express percentages as hundredths? Yes, that's right. They both show that one has been divided into 100 equal parts. The fraction notation shows that 100 has been one has been divided into 100 equal parts. So here we have 10 of those equal parts is 10 hundredths. And we can see them, can't we? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 hundredths. And 10 hundredths is the same as 10%. So the fraction notation expresses how 1 is divided into hundredths. And the equivalent percentage notation below means the same, but is written differently. It's like when we express fractions on, and as decimals and vice versa. They mean the same, but are written differently because of the context. So let's explore that in more detail. Do you remember when we used this equipment and looked at this imagery in a previous lesson together? We used it to find out how many hundredths were equivalent to one, didn't we? Can you remember what that was? How many hundredths are equivalent to one? Shout it out at me now. It's 100. Fantastic. And we know, don't we, that one has been divided into 100 equal parts. So each yellow block represents one hundredth of one. And now we can say that this is the same as one percent. Let's say that together. One has been divided into 100 equal parts. So each yellow block represents one hundredth of one, which is one percent. Fantastic. You think you could show me where one percent would be on the number line? Could you put your finger on the number line where 1% would be? Yes, that's right, it would be here, wouldn't it? Because 1 has been divided into 100 equal parts, and this first division here is one of those equal parts. And how many blocks would I cover my blue 1 with? I would add 1, 1 hundredth. Yes, that's right, because each yellow block represents 1 hundredth of 1, which is 1%. Super. So how many blocks would I need for 10%? I would need 10 hundredths. Fantastic. Shall we count them out together? One one hundredth, two one hundredths, three one hundredths, four one hundredths, five one hundredths, six one hundredths, seven one hundredths, eight one hundredths, nine one hundredths, ten one hundredths. So we have covered 10% of one, haven't we? Put your finger on the number line where it shows that. Brilliant, it's there, isn't it? 10% is equivalent to 10 hundredths. And we can see visually what that looks like. How many hundredths would I need for 20%? Can you have a look at the block and see how many more hundredths I would need? Can you write it as a fraction? Pause me now, and write as a fraction what 20% is and visualise how many more hundredths I need to cover my block. How did you get on? What did you say? Did you say I needed another 10 more hundredths? Fantastic. And so 20% is 20 hundredths. That's brilliant. What about 30%? What would that look like? Put your finger where 30% is. That's right, it's here. And so I would need 10 more hundredths. Brilliant. And I can see I have 30% of one covered with my hundredths. What about 31%? Where would 31% be? Pause me now. Put your finger where you think 31% would be. And also, I'd like you to write that as a fraction with the denominator in hundredths. What did you think? How did you get on? Let's put the block on first. So if I have 31, would I put another 10? hundredths on like I did on the previous examples. No, I don't need another 10, do I? I just need one hundredth. And I can see there I have 31 hundredths. So how do I express that as a fraction? That's right, it's 31 hundredths. And so where would it be on the line? It's one more hundredth here, isn't it? 
So I have 30 hundredths, 31 hundredths, 32 hundredths, 33, 34, 35 hundredths, etc. until I get to 40 hundredths. Brilliant. OK, I'm going to give you a completely random one now for you to look at. I want you to write it as a fraction and see how much of the one you would cover with hundredths. I would like you to write 68 percent. What would 68 percent look like? Can you write it as a fraction? Pause me now and have a look at that. How did you get on? Shall we put the blocks on one? Shall we put the hundredths? So I'm going to remove that one there because it's easier, isn't it, to count up. So I have 30 hundredths, 40 hundredths, 50 hundredths. Oh, that's half of it, isn't it? So 50% is the same as half. 60 hundredths, 70 hundredths. Oh, I didn't do 70 hundredths then, did I? Because I asked for 68 hundredths, so I only needed to add eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more hundredths. So I can see I've got 68 hundredths overall. Did you write it as a fraction? Did you write it as 68 hundredths? Fantastic. And put your, num put your finger on the number line where that is. It would be here. Yes, that's right. So just less than 70 hundredths. Brilliant. 68 hundredths. Hmm. I'm just looking at that now. I'm wondering, can you tell me how many more hundredths I would need to cover the block and have 100% so that I've covered the full amount of the block. I would need 32 hundredths, which is the same as 32%, because they both mean out of 100, or for every 100. Great. How did you do that? Did you just see it? Did you just see that I've got 10, 20, 30, 2 hundredths left? Or did you use your number bonds, perhaps? Because you know that 68 and 32 make 100. But either way, we can use this, can't we? We can see really clearly that we can express any percentage as a fraction with a denominator of 100. What information can you see in this table? I'd like you to pause me and tell me what you notice about each column. What did you see? Did you notice that this first column it's got a percentage amount, hasn't it? And it's 80%. Do you remember in your previous lesson, you looked at how much a battery was filled? Have I got 100% filled battery here? No, I've not, have I? How much approximately of this battery is filled, would you say? Yes, it's about 80% full, isn't it? It's not 100% full, or the entire battery would be filled up blue, wouldn't it? So we can see what 80% looks like. Now, what did we have in this second column? What did you notice? Yes, we've got a percentage written as a fraction with a denominator of 100. But the numerator's missing. Do you know what the numerator is? Pause me now. Write down what the numerator is. Write the fraction for me. What did you write? Did you write 80 hundredths? Fantastic. How did you know it was 80 hundredths? Yes, that's right. Because we know that percent means for or out of every hundred. So if one has been divided into 100 equal parts, then 80% is 80 of those equal parts, 80 hundredths. Fantastic. So now we know that, can we fill in our hundred square? How many hundredths do we need to colour in? We need to colour in 80. Should we do that together? 10 hundredths, 20 hundredths, 30 hundredths, 40 hundredths, which is 40%. 50 hundredths, which is 50%, and that's half, isn't it? Half of the hundred square. 60 hundredths, 70 hundredths, which is 70%, 80 hundredths. Would you have coloured in that as well? Brilliant. And so where would 80% be on this number line? If 50% is halfway, then 80% would be around here, wouldn't it? And actually, if we compare the battery and the number line, then they're showing the same amount has been filled, aren't they? OK, I've got another one for you now. But before we do that, do you remember the bead string? So where would 80% be on the bead string? Can you remember what was the value of each bead? It was 100. Excellent, because one has been divided into 100 equal parts. So if each bead is one, where would 80 hundredths be? 80 hundredths would be here. Well done, because each of these is 10 hundredths, isn't it? 
And some of you might remember that that's the same as a tenth, but we're expressing percentages as fractions with a denominator of 100 today. So 80 hundredths, 80% would be here. Do you think you could do one on your own now? Have a look at this row and it says we've got 45%. Do you think you could find the missing fraction? Colour in the right amount on the hundred square and show me where that is on the number line. And before you do that, maybe have a think about which real life context you did in your previous session uh, to express 45% too. How did you get on? How many hundredths did you say 45% was? Did you say it was 45 hundredths? Fantastic. And why is it 45 hundredths? Brilliant, because 45% means that the whole has been divided into 100 equal parts. And 45 of those equal parts is 45%, because 100 is equal to 1%. Fantastic. So in that case, this must be a doddle, mustn't it? How many of these do we have to colour in? We have to colour in 45 hundredths. Should we do that together? 10 hundredths, 20 hundredths, 30 hundredths, 40 hundredths, and then another five hundredths is 45 hundredths. And that's just under one half, isn't it? Which would be 50 hundredths. So can we use that information to help us identify where 45% is on the number line? Yes, so if 50% is halfway, we can see it's just before there, isn't it? And actually, when you looked at those real life contacts with Mrs Chambers in the last lesson, you said that the town had been destroyed, 45% of the town had been destroyed, hadn't it, by the earthquake? And so that would be about that amount too. Brilliant. Okay, I've got another one for you. So have a go at this one, pause me and fill in the missing information. How did you get on? So it says we have 31% this time. Can anyone express that as a fraction? It is 31 hundredths, excellent. And shall we fill that in on the 100 square? We've got 10%, 10 hundredths, 20%, 20 hundredths, 30%, 30 hundredths. And how many more hundredths do we need now? We need one more hundredth, fantastic. So 31%. And where would that be on this number line? So if we know 50 is here and 25% would be half of that, wouldn't it? So 31% must be in between those around here, mustn't it? I've got one last one of these for you to fill in. Pause me now and have a go at that one. OK, how did you get on? So we know we've got 9%. Fantastic. How would we express that as a fraction with a denominator of 100? So we have 9 hundredths. Excellent. Really well done. And so this should be really easy to fill in on here, shouldn't it? So if we've got 9 hundredths, should we count them together? 1 hundredth, 2 hundredths, 3 hundredths, 4 hundredths, 5 hundredths, 6 hundredths, 7 hundredths, 8 hundredths, 9 hundredths. And remind me again, 1 hundredth is the same as what percent? 1 hundredth is the same as 1 percent. Fantastic. So if we've got 9 hundredths, we've got 9 percent. So that's just under 10 percent, isn't it? So if I want to show where that is on the number line, did you put it about here? Yes, 10 percent. So it's just 10 percent will be there. So 9 percent just before that. Brilliant. I wonder, can you think of something that you might do across the day 9 percent of the time? I was thinking about what I might do for 9 percent of the time. And I thought it's probably playing games on my phone. I bet you're the same too. Well done for filling those in. In the last slide, we systematically filled in the table, didn't we? Starting from the percentage. What's different about this table? Yes, that's right. The different parts of the information are missing. So we don't have the percentage, do we, in this first column? Can I still complete the table? Do I have enough information to help me to complete it? What do we notice? Oh, yes, that's right. I can see how much of the 100 square is covered, can't I? So can I use that to help me fill in all the missing information? Yes, I can, can't I? Do you think you could do that now then? How did you get on? What did you say this was as a percentage? Did you notice that it was 44%? Excellent, because 44 hundredths are coloured, aren't they, on the hundred square? So what would that be as a fraction? It would be 
44 hundredths. Fantastic. And can you put your finger whereabouts that would be on the number line? It would be excellent. It would be there, wouldn't it? 44%. Just under halfway, isn't it? Just under 50%. What about the second row? What can we use on there to help us fill in this, this row? We can see that, that's right, 10 hundredths. Okay, pause me now and fill in the rest of the information on that row. How did you get on? So if we know we've got 10 hundredths, what percentage would this be? It would be 10%, fantastic, because they are equivalent. So how much of the 100 square would we cover? Did you cover 10 hundredths? Put your finger where this would be on the number line. Yes, it would be there, super. Okay, pause me now and do the next row. What did you notice about the next row? Where did we start with the information that we knew? Oh, that's right. Here, it said we have 45% on the number line. It's very similar to this top one, isn't it? And so what would that be as a percentage? It would be 45%, fantastic. And how many hundredths is that? 45 hundredths. And we, do you remember on the B string, we said that 45 hundredths, 30, 40, would be here, wouldn't it? Between 40 and 50 hundredths. Can you show that on the 100 square? Did you show it as 45 hundredths like that? Fantastic. OK, what about 6%? Oh, we've got that, haven't we? It, it started with 6%. So how many hundredths is that? It's 6 hundredths. And how many hundredths would we cover on our 100 square? 6 hundredths. Fantastic. And put your finger where that would be on the number line. Yes, that's right. It's very close to 0%, isn't it? So it's not quite 10%. Uh, it's just over 5%. So here we would express it on the B string. We see it's about there, don't we? 606%. Really well done. It's time for our practice activity. You've worked really hard today thinking about the connections between percentages and fractions that are expressed as hundredths. I'd like you to see if you can fill in the missing information in this table. So good luck with those and I look forward to seeing how you get on. Bye.